Welcome back to uh, another edition of Eat My Shorts, right here in the ranting chair. Smoke me a filter tube at doom and place the lucky strike. After shoving dominoes in the pie hole, and then promptly having to extricate the uh, lower colon. Because guts are not happy. But it happens in life, right? You know. But anyway, I'm perusing the old uh, video shorts on the YouTube, and I found something kind of interesting. And... You know, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know there's a lot of non-drinkers out there, but, you know, this is a subject, obviously, I find near and dear to my heart. My probably oversized heart and, uh, you know, 50-pound liver, right? <clears throat> People are texting me. It's distracting. I'm fustuated and distracted here. Anyway, uh, I shared the video on my community tab. I want you to go watch it. Even if you don't drink, you know, uh, it's one of those things that, like, they're not setting a very good example. Now, like I said, full disclosure, you're listening to a, a, a highly, highly end-stage fucking alcoholic here who's, like, trying to kick the booze again after tonight, okay? So, just fair warning. You know, uh, my first experience with alcohol, uh, well, I was a small child, you know, very small, like, like steel dad's drink or whoever's adults drink when they weren't watching drink this and then go fall asleep under a tree in my diaper. Uh, they only caught me doing it after I had my first little blackout fairy, right? You know, and uh, dad's response was, hey, don't touch my beer. Go get your own out the fucking fridge, boy. Okay. So by the time I reached about age 12, uh, I had become what you would call an alcoholic, right? I was a problem drinker by age 12. In fact, I remember my very first public drink and public cigarette was with my father outside uh, grandma, not grandma from the nursing home, the other grandma, his mom. It was at her funeral at the church on the corner by our old house, and uh, it was a very long and blatherous affair that even the minister was starting to get bored, right? And one thing led to another, and the minister had mouthed off to my dad after he'd had his first stroke and he started hopping around with the cane for the very first time. And so my dad and I went to go stretch our legs out in the parking lot. And uh, eh, lo and behold, he looks both ways. He pulls out a cigarette and he looks at me. And he's like, you want one? I'm like, fuck it. Let's have one, right? The first cigarette that I remember was a Camel Light 100. Yes, dad smoked lights for a lot of years. But, you know, when you're a child, you can't be picky. Well, you can, but it don't get you anywhere in life. And uh, he looks both ways after we get a cigarette lit. He pulls out a bottle and screws the top. And he's like, you want to hit this? I'm like, fuck, yeah. So, uh, you know, a pint of Canadian club, I believe it was, was drank between me and dad. And we had some laughs and we had some cigarettes, you know. And then finally the funeral's over and the minister's going out. And lo and behold, he's like, hey, hold this for me. I got some business to handle. And he's hopping around and he's saying, yo, you cocksucker motherfucker, you get back here right now. And this motherfucker knew my dad was going to whip his fucking ass. And they played Ring Around the Rosie during the minister's car. Now, now my dad was the wrong guy to pick a fist fight with. Uh, he made golden gloves back in 1961 when he was 13. And uh, he, 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 was, he was very unreasonable. We'll just put it that way. Same man who showed me to fist fight, right? And so that's my first experience drinking. Now, in this video, they get two religious kids that, that left their churches. One was a Baptist and the other was a Mormon. If you know anything about super religious communities, uh, they're very against the smoking, the drinking, the swearing, and the screwing, and, and any form of dope or intoxication of any sort other than the power of prayer. Okay? The Mormons even have it in for caffeine. Like, if you drink a cup of coffee, you have sinned, right? They own Coca-Cola, and if you drink Coca-Cola, you have sinned, right? Same as if, you know, you were to bang dope for the first time up your arm. It's it's considered the same. Uh, well, not by the modern church. It's just kind of frowned upon, you know. Uh, some of these nut jobs, and like I said, no judgment for you that are super religious. I, I tolerate your views, so tolerate mine. Uh, sugar's even on that list. Yeah. So they already kind of live some kind of milk toast existence. But see, where I take offense to this is these people's first drink was bottom of the shelf, warm vodka. 
Uh, bottom of the shelf warm vodka is for people like me that are like seriously alcoholics on a budget. Okay, we want the most a uh, dizzy water for our buck, and it's about fifteen dollars a handle. A handle for those of you that do not know is uh, one point seven five liters, right? Because that's what we call the economy size or the weekender, right? Or you know, like when you were like how I was a while back. Uh, uh, that's what we call a lost afternoon and, and angry phone calls the next day, okay? So for your first drink, you have a shot of vodka. And they were like, yeah, right? Well, we all do that with vodka, even I do. I don't like the taste of vodka, by the way. I just hate gin even more. So it's like the cheap stuff versus the cheap stuff that tastes like juniper. I cannot fucking stand it. It's like one of those things that even I need an orange juice with, Okay. Hi, Billy. Moving on. Anyway, so their second drink is a White Claw. Uh, some mango-flavored, peach-flavored fucking abomination. And even they didn't like this. They're like, ugh, you know. And, and their third drink, you know, and they're talking about opening up their experiences and whatnot, was a Cosmopolitan. Now, I've never had a Cosmopolitan, but those first two are caca. You know, like... If you're a drinker or you're contemplating being a drinker, first of all, I do not condone the use of alcohol to dull life's problems. Uh, do as I say, not as I do, children. And uh, wait until your responsible age. Don't be like I was, okay? Leads to trouble later in life. Your first drink of alcohol should be one of those experiences that's like with a loved one. You know, a family member, a close friend, you know, your wife, whatever, right? It should be a social experience, you know. Now, I don't expect these people that are, like, day-to-day -day normal people to, like, hand somebody a, a bottle, a pack of smokes, and a lighter and tell them to skip dinner, okay, like I do. But for fuck's sakes, man, at least teach somebody to drink responsibly, at least until they figure out they don't want to drink or if they don't want to drink responsibly, right? You know. A full stomach generally helps tone down the amount of drunkenness you're going to experience, right? That's why a lot of alcoholics don't eat is because they don't have the money to get as drunk as they'd like to and eat. So, like, they pick one or the other and usually booze wins. Okay. Uh, most drinkers in general are smokers or were smokers at one point in their time. You know, the alcohol should be chilled. You know, like in a glass with some ice, ideally, and, and, you know, the liquor come out the freezer. But but don't start somebody out on shots. Like, it's a good way to ruin the experience for them. Like, unless you're really determined like I was, you know. <laughs> start them out small, like with a Jack Daniels and a Coke, right, for the taste. Or if they don't like the taste of alcohol, mix them kind of a weak, watered-down screwdriver, you know, about a shot of vodka to, like, three shots of orange juice and, and a little bit of ice, you know. Helps get the demon rum down. You know, have some snacks on hand because after drinky drinky time, then comes the drunken snackening, right? You know, some hot peanuts, some pork rinds, bologna sandwiches, you know, uh, cheese if that's what you got in the house. You know, some potato chips, right? I, I like hot Cheetos, but not when I've been drinking because they'd make fire in the guts. You know, something nice, you know, make it a, make it a fun experiment, you know, have some tunes on, you know, play some records, right? Maybe smoke a couple of pots, you know, that, that generally seems to be people's modus operandum of a uh, relaxation time nowadays is the pot. You know, when I was a kid, that was a big fucking taboo, you know, but you know, make it an experience, man. And like I said, I'm not advocating the use of drinking. I'm advocating if you do drink, Drink correctly. Be good at it, right? You know, don't start somebody out off on wine because they'll like the taste of it and then they'll wonder why the fuck they have such a headache in the morning. Uh, champagne is even worse. Uh, not picking on a certain individual here who just told me that. Uh, their first drink was like at 15 with a bottle of champagne. But uh, yeah, don't do that one. Uh, that, that's a weapon of desperation. And, you know, a lot of people are allergic to sulfites, right? You know? Now, I can have brandy and cognac and be okay, you know, for a while. I can't drink a whole bunch of it or I will start peeing blood. But any wine in my system, dude, and more often than not, I end up pissing blood, you know. 
but but you know make make the drinking experience special for somebody like let them pick if they want to do it or not and if they like it or not you know don't coax them into it you know like don't be that guy that's like hey man peer pressure i'm drinking so you got to drink too don't be that guy man like if if you're going to do something do it because you want to don't fucking drag other people into it you know but I hope this helps somebody at home, like some of you youngsters, for when you get old enough to drink, if there's any kids listening. Or some of you that do drink now, but don't do it correctly, you know, because, like, everything in life has to be done correctly. And, you know, about six shots and a cigarette, you know, is about correctly for me. You now, like I said, I'm, I am what you call a seasoned drinker. So, you know, uh, I've had a lot of life experiences, good and bad, most of which involved alcohol and or dope. You know, all of them involve cigarettes or lack of, you know. But yeah, I, I'm going to go inside and relax and uh, unwind and get some stuff done, you know. But uh, until we meet again, take care, God bless, and have a wonderful day. And the people that give white claws to people for their first drink, shame on you and you can eat my shorts, man. <laughs>